Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about, uh, the 1995 album from Nightmares on Wax, Smoker's Delight. So then, it's April 20th. Been enjoying your annual weed day? I don't smoke weed myself. I've stayed sober my whole life so far and plan on keeping it that way, so... Maybe I might not be the perspective people want when hearing about basically the seminal weed album. In some ways I can kinda agree, as I actually wrote up a Nightmares on Wax retrospective for this channel long before I'd actually gotten up the courage to, like, finally start it all up. It was the first set of reviews I ever wrote. Of course, that's also why I have yet to actually record my full thoughts on these albums, because, I mean, I was just starting out this whole writing reviews thing, and most of the current scripts I have in front of me are, like, very incomplete. My Word of Science review right now is a little over half a page long, and it's not very well spoken, but I digress. Obviously, I had to flesh this one out a little bit, but point is, I've been a big Nightmares on Wax fan for a long time now. I remember when I was little, you, like, you know that recommendation CD I've been mentioning a lot lately. Well, Nightmares on Wax technically had a song on there, I mean, even though it was actually just, uh... French lounge jazz piece that he included on his Late Night Tales mix and not an actual real Nightmares on Wax song. But regardless, I, tr I tried looking into the band when I was like in 5th and 6th or 6th grade. But when I found out that the most popular N.O.W. album was called Smoker's Delight, I thought to myself, uh oh. Smoking is bad for you. I should probably stay away. And I didn't look back until I was in my senior year in high school. Which is a real shame, although it it made for a funny story to begin this review with. Like, okay, you're not going to find many people who say a lot of bad stuff about this album. It seems to be one of just those universally acclaimed albums that very few people dislike. And yeah, it should probably come as no surprise, I also freaking love this album. In fact, I included it in my top 20 favorite albums of all time. Admittedly, I didn't just fall in love with this album on first listen, but it's one of those albums that just seems to get better with each successive listen. George Evelyn mentioned that after he uh, heard the KLF's Chill Out album, he was inspired to make a hip-hop version himself. And the result is, well, one of the defining albums of the 90s, and in my opinion, a timeless classic. By the way, I know it's kind of confusing that I've been referring to N.O.W. as both a band and as one person. But here's the thing, like, George Evelyn is kind of the brains behind the operation. He's, he's the DJ. He does the sampling. He handles the live DJ sets. But uh, the other member is Robin Taylor Firth. Uh, he, he usually takes care of like the live instrumentation and that kind of stuff. So like, it's not just a straight DJ Shadow ripoff or something like that. Both the samples and original stuff work together to, like, really hone down that specific vibe. I've often seen Nightmares on Wax classified under the umbrella of Trip Hop, which, while I can see why, sort of, I don't think N.O.W. fits very comfortably alongside the darker experimentations of Massive Attack and Tricky. Nightmares on Wax is very much a band that focuses on feel-good vibes. Hell, their last album was called Feeling Good. They tend to be on the cheerful side of this genre, like still pretty relaxing, but by the same token also quite uplifting. I don't know if I'd call Smoker's Delight uplifting per se. At least not nearly to the same extent as later albums of theirs like Car Boot Soul or Mind Elevation. And it might be kind of a weird album to put in my top 20 of all time because it doesn't get a lot of strong emotional reactions out of me. But sometimes you just need music to vibe to. Something that just sets a mood. And very few albums out there do quite as great a job of mood setting as Smoker's Delight does. Sometimes, well, a lot of times, really, I'm just in the mood to hear some moody nocturnal music or something like that. And while maybe this isn't, maybe, while maybe this album isn't entirely, like, all nocturnal moody vibes, it, it is the kind of album I just put on for, like, maybe I want to hear one track on it, and then I just end up hearing all 16 of them. But 
Yeah, uh, let's go down track by track. Uh, most of my favorite moments on this album are, like, concentrated at the beginning. Like, it opens with Knight's interlude, obviously a retooling to the opener of, of A Word of Science, Knight's interlude. Like, there's lots of slow synth washes, samples of strings and organs. It's both catchy and atmospheric, and it's a really stellar opener to this album. The original was already pretty smooth, but this version achieves an even smoother sound than the original, and sounds quite a bit more polished as well though it was later topped again on the next album, though I'll talk about that another day. There's the track Dread Overboard, which brings in these nice vibraphone and horn sounds that I like. It's got this really nice, like, tropical beach vibe or something, and takes things into a more lighthearted vein, like most of their usual stuff. And there's Pipes Honor, which is like kind of a reggae or rocksteady influenced track. Goes on for nine minutes, really slow, just kind of stays in one place without a ton of progression. To be honest, this was never a huge favorite of mine because its repetitiveness would often wear off on me after a while, but it's also slowly grown on me a lot too. Sometimes you don't really need a track to go anywhere, especially when making an album centered around the effects of a drug that makes you not want to go anywhere. It's got a nice hook to it as well. Me and You is painfully short, but has this great romantic sounding hook. And me, you. Would have been fantastic had they fully fleshed it out into a full track. Something which they totally didn't just do a few albums later, but whatever. Stars has this nice bubbly keyboard loop with a catchy bass line and these sort of uh, off-key vocals. Just another track that just has a ridiculously great vibe to it. And then just leading straight into, uh, like, two tracks in one. The CD here credits it as track six and six and a half here. Uh, it's Wait a Minute and Praying for a Jeep Beat. Which basically have nothing to do with each other, but still sound pretty great. Uh, the former has this cheerful bass line and got a voice that kind of whispers the title. Hey! Hey, wait a minute. And the latter's kind of weird and minimalistic. It's got this kind of off-key wail. With a subtle guitar that isn't even in the same key, I don't think. It's kind of spooky, almost, but not to the point of, like, breaking up the vibe or anything. This kind of not exact key matching is kind of a running theme on this album, though that's not a knock against it. I mean, it actually works rather well. Not running in perfect harmony enhances the hazy atmosphere this whole album has going, making this feel a kind of, like, drug-induced haze. Especially on, like, tracks like Stars. This strategy is used more obviously on tracks such as Cruise Don't Stop, where nothing seems to quite match up. Like, you got a guitar sample on this track paired up with someone repeatedly saying, Don't Stop! Meanwhile, the bass line isn't even in the same key. There's, like, all these cascading bell melodies. It's got a, it's got a lot going on, but it all still seems to work together in its own little sense of harmony. Same with the track What I'm Feeling Good, which also has a lot of these cascading synth melodies, but also these dramatic string samples as well. I'm not really sure what makes this song that much of a chill out, feel good track, but I mean, it is anyway. By the way, there's a lot of tracks on this album that feature a lot of pitched down or just really deep voices. Uh, in particular, the track Groove Street has a lot of homing samples. <laughs> And Man, The Journey, has a little voice in it that just keeps intoning. Man, will some Along with some other samples that don't really seem to, like, resolve, but you don't really want them to stop, either. I mean, these, these are all great tracks, but I personally prefer, like, the less dissonant ones, such as the uplifting Bless My Soul which has a lot of really nice horn samples, and the delightfully catchy Mission Venice, probably the catchiest track on the entire album. Anyway, the album also has, like, an interesting ending. First there's Rise, which is laid out in a similar way to Stars, only this track has like, kind of a happier vibe to it. 
in a major key and everything. Also, for some reason, there's a reprise of this track tacked on the end. And honestly, I barely even noticed the track change. There's a, there's like a slight pause in between, but otherwise, it's really just one track. Why Rise and Rise Reprise are two separate tracks, but Wait a Minute and Praying for a Deep Beat are the same track is beyond me, but... You know, just something interesting, I guess. And finally, the album closes with Gambia via Vegator Beach, which is like this minimalistic track featuring just some congas, a harmonica, or some similar related instrument. It's a very quiet and subdued track. Makes for a very nice and relaxing ending to, obviously, a very nice and relaxing album. Overall, though, between its delightfully hazy atmosphere, its catchy hooks, and its detailed textured sample layering, I can't recommend this album enough. I've never actually smoked weed, as I said before, but here's the thing. I don't think I really have to, either. While I'm sure this album would sound better when you're high, to me it's less a companion to weed and more of a replacement for weed. Its vibe is so well executed that it basically provides the experience of the drugs for you without ever you without you ever having to roll up a joint yourself. And what can I say, really? I mean, I'm in the mood for this kind of chill, laid-back, vibe-heavy music all the freaking time, so I listen to this album all the time. And not just on April 20th every year, although that is a nice occasion to pull it out. It does everything in moderation and doesn't really do a lot to make anything stick out a lot. And I think this fact might make it the kind of thing you need a few listens to really grow on. I mean, it obviously did not blow me away on first listen, but like, the atmosphere is really all you need. The variety from nocturnal film noir -y vibes to, like, just feel-good, relaxed-by-the-beach vibes, and, and more, just make it an essential listen. This album really provided an unreal experience that anyone could enjoy listening. If it doesn't get you right away, maybe a few re-listens should help, but definitely check it out. I'm overall feeling a 9.3 out of 10, but of course this is just my opinion, you can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it, that's all for today, see you next time.